Um, so, welcome to vlog number 20. Um, in the greenhouse today, um, going to put on lots and lots of things, and that's my plan. So, we've got quite a few things that are looking like they're doing really well um, that need potting on. I've got some other things that are just a bit too thickly sewn that need potting on, like these little snapdragons. Um, I want to divide this chocolate mint and make lots more plants. So yeah, I've got lots of things to do here in the greenhouse. Um, <laughs> these skirret are bonkers. There's millions of them, so they really need picking out. So yeah, that's that's my main task. I've also got a bit of weeding to do. Um, it's beautiful sunshine today, really gorgeous. I would love to be able to spend all day here today, but other things um, are happening. I, as you probably know if you follow me, um, I home educate my children. So my younger ones are with friends this morning. My older ones are doing some GCSE revision. So later on, I'm running a writer's workshop for the younger ones and their friends. And then I'll be marking GCSE exam papers later. <laughs> so all the fun. So I'm making the most of my little hour now. Um, so let's get to some work. Um, I'm going to start off with these, um, I think I'll start off with these Nine Star. So these are from Saved Seed. Um, I grew quite a lot of Nine Star plants um, last year, the year before last. So last year I saved the seed um, and they've germinated brilliantly well. Um, I'm hoping that they're going to come true. But if they don't, then it'll be a nice surprise and they'll still be tasty, I'm sure. Um, some of these look really good um, and they look very pale. Some of them have got kind of a purple tinge, I don't know if you can see that. So I've got some really pale ones, which is what I expected. And then some of them have got this tiny purple tinge. So I don't know if they'll be like true nine star or something a bit different, but it'll be exciting to find out. So those are going to get potted on. Um, so I've got these trays, I really like these, um, I got them from eBay, um, so they were second hand when I got them, they're really really robust, they have these really big holes in the bottom, so they're really easy to pop the plants out once it's got roots, and they're a really good size, um, they don't dry out easily, and the plants can get really established in them. So really like these. I got quite a lot of them at the time. I think I've got about 20. Um, and yeah, they're fab. So hopefully they'll last me years and years and years. So what I do is a bit of a nifty trick. I, um, I fill them and then I push down one on top of the other and that makes these little dints all ready for sowing my seeds. So yeah, so I just put one on top of the other and press it down and there we go. So I suppose you could do that with quite a lot of different ones, but it works particularly well with these. Right, and then I'm just going to start. So rather than kind of prise them out, I find it easier when they're in these parts to just tap them all out. And as you can see, they've got plenty of root. And then I just do the short drop. So if you just do the short drop a couple of times, and sometimes it needs more than others and the plants will literally just come apart really easily root and all so i'm just going to see how many i've got one two three and it just saves breaking the roots more than you need to let's see so i'm going to have loads of these so what i might do the purplier ones i might Put separate to the paler ones and just see if they are different. This one's got lots in too. I have loads of wood lice in the greenhouse at the moment. I don't know if you can see any there, some just there in the pot. So I don't know. They don't seem to bother the plants. Um, I suppose I'd rather have them than a slug problem, but uh, I do have slugs as well. <laughs> but yeah, loads of them at the minute. That's a bubbly one. And that is 
That one's really pale. Hmm, this is going to be really interesting. So, some are a little bit bigger than others, but once they are potted on, I expect them all to establish really well. Because they're really good, strong plants, which is fabulous. Nine star, if you don't grow it, um, is a perennial brassica. So it's a bit like sprouting broccoli. Um, it grows leaves generally in its first year and then in its second year um, it develops yellowy florets like broccoli and um, they're usually one main head which is about I don't know a fist size and then once you take that off other shoots grow um, and it will continue to do that until it gives up on doing that basically <laughs> um, and you remove all the shoots they get smaller and smaller and smaller as the spring summer goes on and um, you remove all the shoots and then it will grow again next year and they'll grow for about five years um, before they need replacing so they're a really good plant to have um, unfortunately this is one of the brassicas that are lost in the winter so yeah i'm trying to replace some of my stock of those um i'm just looking around now for another one of these because another one of the modules because um i've got loads of these more than i expected so i'll have to find one because i like them so much i use them for everything so i'll have to go and find one in a minute i'll pop these in here and then i'll go and have a look so all i do then is make a little hole and just pop them in just Get your fingers in the soil. There's so much research that tells us how beneficial the kind of microorganisms in the soil are for our health and one of them is that it can have the same effect as an antidepressant. So get your hands in the soil and get happy. I'm so pleased with these, they look great. So that one's got loads of fruit. I can hear the bees. Hello. Are you a bee or a wasp? It's very early for a wasp. Oh no, it's a bee, I think. I hope it's a bee. We had wasp trying to make its nest in. Oh no, it is a wasp. Mm. Um, I'm only saying that because I'm allergic to wasps, so I'm not really very keen on having them in here. And we had one, I was just saying last year, that tried to make its nest in the shed. Um, which wasn't ideal so I had to keep kind of moving it um, as it was making it and avoid getting stuck but it did give up in the end and made it elsewhere but uh, yeah I don't really want you in here mm. right that's one tray done so I shall go and find another tray hopefully Mr Waspy will go away fill this up. Okay, so if I move that one ready for watering and get a label. I've just had a bit of a sauce out and tried to move a load of things into another wood louse, right? You go on the outside. Um yeah I've just tried to move lots of things into the polytunnel. Some things have gone outside like the more established brassicas, not planted out into the ground yet but just onto the potting table outside and um, made a bit of room because it's just that time of year when we're not warm enough for anything to really, well, not for many things to go outside. So it's fighting for space. It's like Tetris in the greenhouse and polyton at the minute. Right, so I get all these in here. I'm definitely gonna have enough brassicas if all these take. And the good thing about this plant as well is that 
you can um, you can eat all of it so you can eat all the leaves as well as well as the flowering shoots so multi-purpose edible which is always good Pot of these. Oops. I seem to have put a label on them with nothing on, unless that's already washed off with the water in. Just moving these across because I've realised I've got two part trays. So if I move all these over here, then I've only got a few in the end of that, and I can put something else in that one. So that's two and a bit trays full of nine star, which is brilliant. So I'll just put these up at the end, I think. something else can go in the end. Right, I'm reduced to a crayon. Um, I seem to have left all my pens at home. So it'll have to do for now. So the next thing is, mm. <laughs> see this is the thing now, because really I want a full tray to do my meat. So maybe I'll have to put these little green, just three little individual pots. Sorry, I hope you don't mind being transplanted a million times. There's one. See these are really cheapy pots. And as you can see, look, I mean, these are on the second year, but there's no way they're going to last as long as these. So it is worth investing in good pots. Although, as I said, these were from eBay, so they weren't very expensive at all. Um, but yeah, it's, I like to find things that are going to last a bit if possible, especially if you're buying things that are plastic. Right, so those three can go there and I'll just put more labels on those in a minute. Right, mint. So I have loads of mint that grows in the polytunnel. Um, it's not the best place to grow it, but it was there when we arrived and it's very happy and it's impossible to get rid of once it's established um, because it grows from every tiny little bit of root. So I've just accepted life with the mint in the polytunnel and I keep it under control by just when I harvest it, I pull it up root and all. Um, and we love it, it's a great mint. It's really lovely for tea, it's really lovely just mashed with potatoes. Um, so yeah, it, it's fine to keep. But this is a chocolate mint, and I'm not going to plant this out into the ground, I'm going to keep it in a pot. So as you can see, this is from last year, this is what I've not chopped off. Um, I'm going to divide it and try and make lots of little plants. So, Here's what I've got. I'll just use this tray. So another recycling thing, some a meat tray here. And I'll use that chocolate mint thing in there. And I'm just gonna literally pull it apart so that bit doesn't have any on it. And you can be really rough with mint, it's a really big response, it will be very forgiving. Um, so there we go. So I've got a bit there with some growing shoot, plenty of root, 
that's perfect to make a new little bow. So I'm just going to pop it in there, cover it with a bit more compost. One done. So there we go. I don't know what that noise was. Um, so I'm just going to keep going with this and pull them apart. So that one's not as good as you can see, like it's still got some root, so it will be fine, but um, not as much root as the other one. I'm sure it'll be okay. You could um, use a knife as well to cut this into pieces if you had one with you. I'm just chopping off the old bits. Um, and I might just chop into there. Where are you growing from? Oh no, it pulled apart. So there's two bits. So if you do want to grow mint in your garden and you don't want to worry about watering it because it does like to stay quite damp, um, my tip would be to put it in a pot, but then put the pot into the ground. So dig a hole the size of the pot and sink the pot into the ground. And that way it stays contained so it doesn't take over. Um, but it also stays well watered. This one's got loads of roots. Push them. went. can't hear it anymore. Hopefully it just went and found a new home. I think I might just need to leave that bit as it is. It doesn't want to pull apart that one. But you? Do you want to come? Oh, that one's going to come out. There we go. Sometimes you can just kind of feel if things are attached or if they're happy to pull apart. So another way that you can propagate mint is just from root cuttings. So if you find a piece of root like so, and it's got a main thick root and then all these little side, very fine feeding roots, plant that in, that will grow just as well. So to show that, I'll just put that root in there and just put it kind of flat down onto the ground because they do grow by lateral roots. So as it's grown in the ground, it will send out roots this way. And that's why it takes over because it just keeps going. So that's why if it's in a pot, it'll hit the pot and it won't go any further. So yeah, we'll pop that one in there. And you can see that that will grow just as well as the ones that have leaf. I just pulled you out. <laughs> I've just planted it and then pulled it back out. So I put it back in. There we go. And just a bit more. And there's not much root on that one. We'll see how it gets on. I'm just going to see if I've got another piece of root in here. I could do another root cutting. There we go. That bit's not bad. I'll just shove that in there. And just see what happens. That bit's not as good a piece of root, but maybe it'll grow just as well. Okay, so that's all the chocolate mint. Now what I've got left here 
and I've got a bit here that will grow. I've got lots of just random bits of root. So I think I'm just going to put them back into a pot and just see if I get another plant from those, if, you know, if the plant kind of establishes well. So I'll put all the root back in with a bit of extra new compost just to give it a bit of a boost. Let's get rid of this old growth. star anymore you are nine star and um, this one is chocolate mint a bit of leaf there you can go in there as well it smells gorgeous and in a cup of tea it really does taste quite chocolatey um like a what do they call them an after eight mint yeah really nice so that's those done Right, so my next little task is snapdragon seed dlings. Now these are tiny. Um, I'm just going to figure out where I'm going to chuck this. Yeah, so snapdragon seedlings are really, really, really small. So I'm going to find a smaller, this will do. So something like this size is going to be ample because they're so tiny at the minute. This is massive for that, for those little tiny seedlings. So just fill this up. Okay, there we go. So that up there so you can see it a bit better um so where are you snapdragon seedlings over so in here i've got i sewed a row of cosmos i sewed a row of calendula and i sewed a row of snapdragons and as you can see not a single cosmos sadly a couple of calendula and um, loads of snapdragons now i also I've been propagating guava seeds. Um, this was just a bit of a random project, um, and I'll, I'll put the video a little bit further, put a couple of videos on a little bit later in this vlog just to show you. Um, and this is the one that I've got going. Um, the reason it's in here is because I've been growing them in my grow box at home in the cupboard with the lights and things. Um, and most of them didn't do that well and just this one um, I knocked off when I was moving things around I did them in little coir pots and I'd knocked it off and I thought oh no like don't know so I thought I'd just pop it in there because there was nothing growing at the time and it'll just kind of keep it there for a few minutes while it doesn't dry out and I do something else and I forgot about it and it seemed quite happy <laughs> so I've left it there um, and I'll probably just put that in its own little pot today so that's quite exciting, growing something new, never grown those before. So I might pop that on first, just find it on a little pot, see if we've got an interesting colour one so that I remember what's what. And here we go, I've got a little green pot. We'll put it in here. Okay, so. And I'm just pulling these out with um, a lolly stick. So yeah, as you can see, gorgeous little teeny tiny guava tree. So I'm gonna put that in there. And hopefully it will grow. Fingers crossed. Right, let's give you the label. I'm going to hold them by the leaf because the stems are really delicate and as you can as you can see there's not much there there's not much root so I'm not sure how well that's going to grow 
but we'll pop it in there. Let's see if these have got any more root. So that one's got a bit more. Oh yeah, that one's better. That one's got more root. So we'll see how we get on. I might just take that one out for now because I've got so many. That I'm better just to pot on the ones that are looking like they might actually grow. So note to self, next year if I'm growing these, sow them a bit more thinly because ideally I wouldn't be putting these on until they had true leaves and these just, some of them just have true leaves, they're very very small. Um, but problem is is they're getting really overcrowded so and I'm going away for a couple of days so I don't want to leave them any longer it's quite interesting you can see that they're going to be different colors from slightly different leaf shade which is nice and that one looks a bit rubbish. Yeah, that one looks a bit rubbish, but this one looks okay. Nope, So the ones that I'm putting in this little, um, just in the rubbish bit there, are the ones that don't really seem to have any root, or the roots are just kind of one. Um, I'm trying to pick out the ones that have at least multiple little feeding roots, so I think they might establish better. And some of these ones that are really tiny have actually got quite a decent root system, and some of the bigger ones are rubbish. Another can tell. Just a few more. Hmm. I'm going to drop that one. That one can go in that pot. Okay, so I've got a few spaces now, so even if it's a bit rubbish, if it's got any root, I'll stick it in. I might as well have a full tray of you. And one more. Yeah, let's not to choose the best of the rubbish ones. Yeah, I think you are the chosen one. Okay, right. So snapdragons dawn. Ooh. There we go. All oh, then. So how many is that? Three by three, six, nine, twenty-seven snapdragons. So I water those. And guess what? We're running out of room again. <laughs> right, so you'll have to go there and I'll play move around again. Oh, I can hear that wasp again. Look, you cannot make your home in here. No. That's what you're doing, isn't it? Looking for a house. Eating leaves. Yes. Oh, good. I think it listened. Um, right. Let's see. Is there anything else I need to put on today? Um, calendula here. They're going to need to go in their own pots. Let's pop them in a few of these. 
find one more bigger pot. Right, so calendula are happily much bigger seedlings as you can see, much better. So those will grow on beautifully. I absolutely love calendula, can't have enough of that. Um, beautiful orange or yellow or even like a pale cream you can get I think. Um, gorgeous colours. Edible, brilliant for the pollinating insects um, and I use them to make skin salves um, it's so good for your skin yeah it's a brilliant plant so very happy to have as many of those as will grow for me I'll pop those in there done oh yeah I think that's as many things as I need to pot on right now I think that's all the emergency ones I think that skirt will possibly last for a few more days. Um, yes, so now I will go and do some weeding.
at this time of year, greenhouse and polytunnel Tetris is definitely a real thing. So I'm not doing too bad at the moment, but it's starting to get quite busy. So I'm starting to move things that are hardy enough to cope outside, even if we get a bit of a frost um, onto this table that I have at the side of the polytunnel now. And then I'm moving things from the greenhouse that I've already potted on into the polytunnel so they can just grow on a bit more and have a bit more protection than being outside. Um, and yeah, just juggling things around. So I'm bringing out the leeks. They should be fine out here. Um, the hardy kales, they've come out here as well. And hopefully they'll you know, they'll be okay, basically. Um, these are things that grow well outside during the winter. So even if they're at this baby stage, um, they should be fine. Fingers crossed. It's soon going to be all change in the polytunnel beds. So at the moment, there's still a few things that we've had growing over the winter and early spring. But as the next month goes on, these, especially the brassicas, will either get eaten or they'll be transferred outside into the brassica cage. And these beds will turn into tomato and cucumber and peppers and aubergines. Um, that this is where they're going to live. The strawberries in the polytunnel are really in flower at the moment. Um, so it's really nice to have a few plants under cover that will just crop that little bit earlier. But outside are doing okay and they do have a few flowers as well. Now I think this is probably because these plants are the ones we transplanted from the polytunnel. The strawberry plants that have been outside all winter I don't think there's any sign of any flowers on them yet. So I think this is going to be good. I think we're going to have a good staggered crop. My dandelions that I grow on purpose in this corner are just gorgeous. I absolutely love them and so do the bees and so do the guinea pigs who we grow them for. And it's just lovely. The weather's just so perfect. I could just sit here all day. I'm very pleased that since I potted on this panache kale, it's coming on really well. It was starting to look a little bit sad, but it's definitely perked up. And the Taunton Deans are also looking really good. So, and that nine star. So I think my brassica cage is going to be gorgeous this year. The allotment's really starting to get more green now. And yeah, it's gonna burst into life over the next few weeks. I was incredibly lucky this last weekend to go on a wild well-being retreat. Um, it was down in Norfolk in this beautiful private woodland. We stayed in these gorgeous little silos that had been converted. We did yoga and meditation and we ate gorgeous food. And it was such a lovely group of people. We had the most peaceful, fun, just gorgeous time. Um, so I'm very grateful and I've come back feeling very calm and zen and hopefully that will last. This was the beautiful little hut that we stayed in. Um, 
everywhere was just beautiful here's me posing and yeah it was just incredible so if you ever get a chance to do something like that i would definitely recommend it there was an outdoor bath we did foraging walks and forest bathing and ate gorgeous pizzas um it was just such a lovely time and it really gave you the chance to reconnect and take time to chill really My beautiful chickens obviously missed me terribly, so I made sure that their coop got plenty of new dust and some special treats when I got home. Um, and here's Coolio enjoying herself. At this time of year there's so much beautiful fresh spring growth that it's easy to just pop out into the garden and collect a basket of salad. So this is ladies mantle or Alcamilla mollis and the leaves of this are really tasty and nutritious. Um, I wouldn't eat the older ones in a salad but the younger ones are really lovely. Sedum is another brilliant salad leaf at this time of year. Um, Obviously you don't want to take the centre part where your flowers are going to grow from but you can take a few little leaves from each plant and these are really succulent and lovely. Dandelions are completely edible so the flowers are really lovely in a salad and the young leaves are really good too and um, they have a little bit of a bitter taste but i don't mind that and bitters are really good for you so it's definitely worth adding a few of those brambles um i have far too many of these at the top of my garden at the moment it really needs to clear out but the very young leaves are really nice and tasty and the, they even have kind of a coconut um it's quite a strong coconut taste fennel is another lovely thing to put into a salad it's a really strong taste obviously it's quite aniseedy but if you like that taste it's beautiful and yeah the young feathery leaves are lovely at the moment dog tooth violets are a really pretty addition to put on the top they have a slightly sweet taste they don't taste of much really but they look really nice so it's definitely worth having some um marjoram golden marjoram here um, I like to put a few little herbs into a salad, just makes it a bit more interesting 
um, and this grows really well in my garden so I have lots and lots of it and chives um, I love chives I try to grow as many as I can the bees love the flowers and they're just such an easy thing to grow so yeah here's a few more violets they're really pretty and they re-flower for quite a long period of time and there we have it a beautiful garden salad so as promised here is my little experiment growing a guava tree so this is a guava fruit that i picked up from um, a chinese supermarket um, in chinatown in manchester but i'm sure you can pick them up from lots of other places um, and all I did was just remove the seeds. Um, there's quite a lot in each guava, but the germination isn't meant to be very good. So I just took all the seeds out that I could find. Um, and yeah, just thought better more. Um, and that way, hopefully at least I'll get a few to grow. As we know, only one has survived, so it's a good job that I, I did take out all the seeds. So they're quite hard, like little round hard seeds. Um, it's a beautiful colour inside this guava, uh, like a really blush pink and the taste is amazing. I really love it. So if we could get one to grow and it would give fruits, that would be excellent. But really I'm just growing it as a bit of an experiment um, just to make a nice house plant. So first of all, I put the seeds into, sorry about that, I put the seeds into a little pot to soak. Um, and when they'd soaked for a couple of days, I put them onto some tissue. And I put the tissue, once I'd got all the seeds onto it, um, into a Ziploc bag. So I just folded, the, the, this was wet tissue, sorry, I should have said that. It's damp tissue. Um, just folded it over so the seeds were in the dark and completely covered in the damp tissue and then put it into a Ziploc bag and I put this into a dark warm place so this went into my grow cupboard which has a heat mat but it went kind of under um, the tray that the plant pots sit in um, so that it would stay warm but dark I don't know if it needs to be dark to be honest but that's what I did and then after about three weeks it took ages I got these little shoots so here we are as you can see and the shoots were growing so I waited until they had some root um, and then I took each one and just tried to plant it really carefully into these little coir pots I think you could use anything at this stage. To be honest, if I did it again, I probably wouldn't use the coir pots because there's no nutrition in them. Um, and really, I think these would have benefited from a better compost. Um, although the coir is really free draining. So I might mix the coir with something a bit better if I were to do it again. But you live and learn. So then I put all these little coir pots back into my grow box where it was light and warm and let them grow on. And they did okay. Um, I think probably about three or four were doing okay. And then I had a little accident and knocked them over. <laughs> At which point one of them kind of fell out of the pot and that's the one that I replanted and has grown. And the others did not survive probably because there was no nutrition in the choir so yes that's my top tip and I will update you on how the tiny little guava tree grows now that it's moved to the greenhouse so that's about it for this week thank you so much for watching and to everybody who subscribes um, it's really lovely all the comments that I get about these videos um, Hopefully your gardens are doing really well and hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye for now.